What you're about to touch on now is what a season base is all about. You'll come across a question in the exam, 8 marks, 9 marks, in some cases even 10 marks, uh, requiring all the things we are about to talk about now. So when an acid and a base react, they form a salt. Uh, there's something cool that we're going to talk about with regards to that. If the base contains hydroxide ions, then water will also be formed. The word salt is just a general term which applies to the products of all acids and base reactions. A salt is a product that is made up of the cation from a base and an anion from an acid. Cation, just positive ion, and anion is a negative ion. Right. A salt is a neutral ionic compound composed of cations and anions. It is the result of acid-base neutralization reaction. Right, so we know that when you have an acid and a base, one of the products that you're going to have is uh, salt, right? Stories. And then when an equivalent amount of acid and base react, so that neither the acid nor the base are in excess, the reaction is said to have reached the equivalence point. At this point, neutralization has been achieved. So if we have uh, equal amounts of acids and base, and then they react completely and there's no base or acid in excess we say that we have reached a equivalent point right and then that is where we can say neutralization has been uh, achieved right just to touch on this uh, if you have ulcers uh, your stomach produces too much acid and the medication you take is just a base that goes and neutralizes that acid and then you're just left with salt in your stomach and not the acid uh, anymore so these acid base reactions uh, they're very key to a lot of uh, medication that you take uh, to a lot of household uh, uses right and then equivalence point let's take a look at uh, the technical definition when a stoichiometrically equivalent number of moles of both reactants has been added to the reaction if the base contains hydroxide ions, then water will also be formed. Right? You've seen from uh, the reactions we have covered up to so far that most of the time water is one of the products or is one of uh, the reactants. And there is something profound about H2O that I want us to take a look at. Take a look at this reaction between h2o and h2o we we literally have h2o plus h2o so what's going to happen one h2o will act as an acid and the other one will act as a base and then consequently we have h3o plus and oh minus right h2o plus h2o to give us h3o plus plus oh minus this is what we call auto protolysis is the transfer of a proton between two of the same molecules right we have a transfer of a proton here uh, between h2 and h2o essentially but what is the consequence of this it leads us to the auto ionization of water well this is what we're talking about here is the reaction of water with itself to form h3o plus ions and oh minus ions what is the equilibrium constant for the auto ionization of water or what we refer to as kw oh well clearly you can see that it is equals to h3o plus multiplied by oh minus right these are our products these are our products and then for the reactants we're not going to have anything because we have h2o and h2o which are in liquid phase and like i said we only consider aqua solutions and gases right there's quite a difference between liquid and aquas uh, which a lot of people don't realize right so h3o plus multiplied by oh minus this gives us one times 10 to the minus 14 right this is the equilibrium constant for the auto ionization of water this right here is very consequential we're going to use this time after time we are going to derive a lot of things from this concept h3o plus multiplied by oh minus it's one times 10 to the power minus 14. well 
from this we can actually get to showing that pH is equals to 14 from this this is where a lot of things stem from right you'll see that in a few but for the time being uh, let's take a look at how we can use that to calculate ion concentration right although you normally ignore the auto ionization of water in calculating the h3o plus concentration in a solution of the strong acid the auto ionization equilibrium still exists and it is responsible for a small concentration of oh minus ion right let's take a look at example Calculate the concentration on OH minus ion in 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. Well, you can see that uh, this question doesn't make much sense. Uh, I think there's a typing error here. So let's take a look at example 2. Instead, the concentration of a solution of NaOH, a strong base, is 0.01 mole per decimeter cube. Calculate the OH minus and h3o plus concentration in this reaction okay let's go ahead and take a look at that so we have naoh and we're supposed to calculate the concentration of oh minus and h3o plus so how can you possibly do that we know that naoh associates or dissociates to form na plus plus oh minus we know this to be true right so naoh minus and oh minus well they are in the same they have the same volume right because we are getting this oh minus from the naoh right they're not reacting with anything else that would increase or decrease the volume uh, even if that was the case they would still be in the same container uh, so to say so the volume would be the same so the volume is the same right is the number of moles are the number of moles going to be the same well the balancing coefficient of naoh and oh minus is one so the number of moles are going to be the same also right so the volume is the same uh, the number of moles are the same right so are the concentrations going to be the same yes they should be because concentration is just number of moles divided by the volume so what is the concentration of naoh the concentration of naoh is 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cube so the concentration of oh minus should also be equals to 0 0.01 moles per decimeter cube right so we have the concentration of oh minus but using this concentration of oh minus can we find the concentration of h3o plus using the concentration of oh minus yes we can using the auto ionization of water that's why i was saying that that concept is very consequential in what we are going to be doing take a look at this so oh minus multiplied by h3o plus we had said that this is equals to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 well should be easy to see what we are going to do here the concentration of h3o plus is going to be equals to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the concentration of oh minus which is 0 0.01 well um do i need to put that in my calculator or i can just do it in my head i think i can so h3o plus is going to be equals to let's take a look one times 10 to the minus 12 moles per decimeter cube